What's going on you guys? It's Joe the Pro here back at it again with another video. Before this video starts today guys, I need you guys to please drop a like on this video, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. And today what we are doing, we are doing a little bit of work on the dirt bikes. So the first thing that we have to do, we're going to do the 150. So I put it down a couple weeks ago because, um, here I'll show you, where is it? It's back here my back tire uh, it's pretty it was pretty bald i just changed it out i this was an mx 71 it was the stack rear tire and these this is an mx 52 so basically what happened i was going through some grass and uh it, it was like next to a big puddle and somebody else must have went through the puddle and splashed all the water on the grass and so that caused the grass to be slippery and i was going through there not thinking about it and i slid my back tire slid out because i gave it a little bit too much throttle so i put it down and i think i bent my um subframe a little bit because so as you can see with the seat sitting on it you can see how it's uneven right there how there's a little bit more of a gap there than there is on the left side and you can tell, because if you look at the tire straight up, you can see the little bend right there in the bottom. So we're going to put the bike up on the stand and we're going to check the level of the back of the subframe. And that'll tell us if it's the subframe or if it's just the plastic. It could, I've seen it just be the plastic be bent a little bit. And that's what I'm thinking it is, but I just like to make sure. So I'm going to put it up on the stand and check the level of the subframe in the back. And I just wanted to make something clear to you guys. Um, whenever you're putting your bike up on a stand or a bucket to do work or just setting it on there, always pick pick it up by the swing arm. You never want to pick it up really by the exhaust because that can, I've seen it happen. You can break the welds on the pipe. So, and like, I guess, I wouldn't recommend it if you can do it with the swing arm, but I guess you could hold it there. But that's still holding a plastic and you can break your plastics. So yeah, just a little tip for you guys. Okay, so since I have it up on the stand now and I've got it pretty leveled out from looking at it, the back tire, all I gotta do now is take off the seat, side panels, and the rear fender. And then I'll take the level and I'll put it on the back of the um, subframe and we'll check it.
Okay, so now I have the rear fender taken off, as you guys could see. And just from looking at it, it does look like this side is a bit low. Lower than this side. But I'm going to take my level here. Put it right up there, like that. It is saying it's a level. It is saying it's just a little bit low, actually. But it's not bad, it's still pretty level. Hmm. Could have been, it might have been just the, uh, one of the bolts in the rear fender was not in the right way. Sometimes the, some you can sh things can shift up a little bit. But yeah, we, let's try putting it back on and just try shifting a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. But it think it might just here. Let's check. It might just be a shift in the plastic. What the heck? This seems weird. I'm not sure. Well, the subframe is not bent. That's what we know because we just took the level. So the subframe's good. I don't really. Th I can't really think of what else it would be. Might just have to deal with it. All right, let's put it back together. Do not, if you, um, if there's like more than one bolt in your plastics, do not, um, torque the bolts until you have all of them in, because sometimes like with flexible plastic, you can't always get the other bolts in. So yeah, let's continue putting it back together. And also, never over tighten the your bolts for your plastics, because as you can see, the threads on these they're not the strongest, and you'll end up stripping them from over tightening. So yeah. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot better. Like here, I bet if we put this level on, it would definitely look better. Uh, you can't really get it flat on here because it's rounded. I'm gonna try the best we can. Yeah, that's level. All right, perfect. Let's get the side panels and seat back on.
wow. Look how good this looks now. It's perfect. Couldn't be any better. So, yeah, I didn't even have to... Um, yeah, I didn't even have to touch the subframe. I guess the bolts and the plastics were just not lined up. Hmm. All right, well, that was easy. That definitely made a big difference. All right, now let's... Um, we've got to... I think we've got to tighten up the chain on this, on the PW80, and we got to clean the air filter. So let's get doing that. First thing we're going to do, we're going to... The air, the air box is right in the front. We are going to take that out clean the filter out and let it dry out in the sun while we uh, mess with the back tires so yeah we'll do that first This is looking pretty dirty. We better get this thing cleaned up and put back into the bike. Okay, so normally I go with Maxima oils and fluids or whatever, but I decided I would try the PJ1 um, oil filter, oil and cleaner. And to be honest, it's not as good as the Maxima products, but they still do the job. So I'll finish these up and then I'll get some fresh Maxima cans. Okay, so usually what I do with for the PW80, I take this stuff, drop it in there. That's just all, the only thing that's in there is um, some purple power and water mixed together. It's a little dirty, I should probably clean it out soon. <laughs> all right, let's drop this in here. So you really wanna try to work all the oil and stuff out so you're not wasting your cleaner and stuff. So you want to just try the soap and water first and usually whatever you can't get then you use the cleaner but you just don't want to waste all your cleaner if you don't have to so you want to just make sure the whole thing gets in there get it nice and cleaned up it's kind of hard for me because i only have one hand right now because i'm holding the camera but see it's already a lot better so now we'll give it some of the cleaner and see how good that works Okay, so this is about as clean as I'm going to get this one. So if you want to wring it out a couple more times, well, not wring it out, just you want to squeeze all the water out of it. There we go. And then now we're going to take it. It's a nice sunny day out. Throw it right out here onto the table. And let it dry for a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to finish cleaning these because these are honestly just disgusting. All right, so now you, what you do, you go inside and get your brother's toothbrush and yeah, just wanna scrub all that old dirt and grime off of it until it's nice and clean because why risk getting mud and stuff into your carburetor, clogging that up and possibly even into your top end. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is like, you don't really have to worry about this on the bigger bikes, but take these chain guards off so you can get more access to the chain itself. Okay, so, um, I can, so they say to measure it from the middle of the swing arm. So I, right now I can get, um, about three fingers in there, but for the smaller bikes, they say you should probably put about two or two and a half in because these don't have a chain guide chain guiders or anything so we are gonna loosen up the axle and move the tire back a couple spots okay so for these bikes you got the chain tensioners right here on the end of the swing arm and you just have to turn these nuts you have to loosen the one on this side first because they're locked together and um, you just keep going until you have two fingers and then you go into the other side and make sure that these lines here match and yeah, so I'm going to do that and I'll get back to you guys when I'm done. 
So that's about two fingers right there. I don't really want to go any farther than that. I think that's pretty good. So let's go do the other side now to even it up. All right, guys, so I've got, um, I got it all lined up. I've got um, the lock nuts tightened up. So now I, all I gotta do is tighten up the axle. But, but before we do that, we have got to take this rag and put it in the sprocket. So the, so that's just how you know that the, hang on one second. That's how you know that the wheels all the way backed up to where the nuts are. All right guys, so we got the back axle all tightened up now. So let's go check on the air filter and see how it's doing. It's already all nice and dry because of the nice sun that we've got today. So we're gonna get this nice and oiled up and put it back in the bike. That should be good. You don't need a lot for these small ones. Make sure you work in the oil after you spray it on there, just to ensure that the whole filter has oil in it. Especially with the two-stroke engines, you want to make sure those are lubricated well. On there. Go. And the long, as, as ironic as it sounds, the long screw actually goes in the bottom, even though it looks like it should go in the top. But yeah, that's just how it is. Okay, guys, we got that all put on, but I did forget one thing. We have to put the chain guard back on back here. So let's do that. Just like that, guys, it's back on. So now both bikes are ready to go, ready to rip. And before I forget in this video, guys, thank you. We hit 200 subscribers finally. I cannot believe it. I cannot thank you guys enough that we've come this far on the channel. And um, I hope you guys are liking these dirt bike videos. I'm trying hard to make more of them. And if you guys like these kind of videos where we tune up and fix the dirt bikes, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys have any questions about anything we did here, leave it down in the comments below as well. And please subscribe for more content. Twitter, Instagram, links in the description below. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget, please like, subscribe, and peace, and do it like a pro. We'll see you guys in the next one.